Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorder in South Africa. So what exactly is autism spectrum disorder, or as a lot of people call ASD? It includes several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately. Autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, and Asperger syndrome. It includes difficulty with communication and interaction with other people, restricted interests and repetitive behaviors, symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school, work, and other areas of life. How common is it? Well, <clears throat> the uh, statistics are a little bit skewed now because you used to have something that was diagnosed separately and now it's diagnosed you know, as a, uh, an umbrella uh, term. The latest data showed that one in 54 children are diagnosed with ASD. Uh, it is hard to do historical comparisons because of the criteria changing. It's four times more common in boys than girls, and it's reported in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. So how is it diagnosed? It's not always easy. It's not like you order one specific lab test and, you know, boom, you know that <clears throat> the child has uh, ASD. There's a wide range of symptoms. Oftentimes it's a two-step process where the pediatrician assesses the child. Um, and then there's a team of specialists, you know, after that. Um, there's usually problems with two categories, uh, communication and social interaction and then restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior. There's also possibly some genetic testing included. When you look at the traditional treatments, um, there's not really one standard, and there is no cure for ASD. <clears throat> it's uh, a focus on each child's specific needs. Commonly, what we hear from parents is that they uh, have undergone or are undergoing behavioral management therapy, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, speech therapy, uh, there's various medications, and then there's a nutrition uh, program specifically for ASD, and then occupational therapy and physical therapy if necessary. All right, so let's touch on some of the traditional uh, medications that are being used, SSRI or tricyclic antidepressants, antipsychotics at times, uh, stimulants like Ritalin, anti-anxiety meds, and then also anticonvulsants. Quite a few children with ASD uh, come hand-in-hand -hand with a seizure disorder, so um, a lot of times they're on uh, anticonvulsants. When it comes to stem cell therapy, treatments to date have focused on the use of multipotent stem cells. Multipotent stem cells uh, are either mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs, or HSCs, which are hematopoietic stem cells. There's about six ways we know that the stem cells work in the body, the brain. First of all, they reduce inflammation dramatically. They modulate the immune system. For instance, you know, steroids just knock out um, an immune reaction, but the, uh, there's a lot of selectiveness when it comes to stem cells, which is great. Um, there's new blood vessel formation, there's cell-to-cell -cell signaling, which is called paracrine signaling. There's reduction of cell death, reduction of apoptosis is what that's called, and there's also uh, promotion of cellular proliferation. So it's not a cure. Um, that would be great. Um, but it just doesn't happen. Now, as you'll see, it can dramatically help. We've performed over a thousand of these procedures. It's one of our more common. Um, you know, once you help kids and the parents talk and, and you know, it kind of blossoms. Um, recent evidence suggests that immune dysregulation and neuroinflammation play a role in the cause of ASD, and that's two of the things that the stem cells are fantastic and they work well on. Um, you can read the third bullet point. It's pretty technical. Um, here's a study from 2019 talking about how MSCs can be transplanted directly without genetic modification or pretreatment. Children don't need blood typing or cross-matching. That's been shown in multiple studies over the years. A great one out of Panama with Riordan's group um, looking at how, you know, you just don't need to do that. There's no rejection reaction. Uh, it's well tolerated. The umbilical stem cells are called immunologically privileged. They don't have HLA-2 markers, so they don't cause a rejection reaction. We've never seen that, and we've done over 21,000 stem cell procedures in the last 11 years. They also don't cause tumors. There's no evidence so far to show that um, at all. And so we, there's also a lot of evidence to show the opposite. Um, 
There are several proof of concept clinical trials mentioned in this study and meta-analyses, which is where you pull multiple studies together and statistically evaluate, which show the safety and effectiveness of the mesenchymal stem cell treatment for autism. So I do want to mention that um, we don't use embryonic stem cells. We never have. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. Uh, they're also not safe. They can cause tumors. They cause rejection. And, you know, they just should not be used uh, clinically. Uh, we also don't use induced pluripotent stem cells. So there's a lot of research on those, but there's no clinical available treatments. There shouldn't be worldwide until safety is assured. So we use MSCs and HSCs. Um, as mentioned, and we use those from umbilical cord tissue that's donated um, by consenting mothers in an FDA-regulated process. So this is out of the World Journal of Stem Cells in 2014. It's a literature review. There's a table on the right which shows the results from multiple clinical trials. Um, on the first column, you can see some of these are autologous where they use the child's own uh, tissue, and then some are allogenic, which is from a donor. So <clears throat> all but one of these studies showed excellent results, um, as you can see in the primary outcomes. I think the second from the bottom did not have any improvements. That was an autologous study using their own umbilical cord, but the others did. Um, now, what's interesting is that if you look at the second column and how many cells, uh, stem cells, are used in these uh, clinical trials, it's very high amount. Like, for instance, 2 times 10 to the 6 per kilogram, that's 2 million stem cells per kilogram. Very high amount. Um, if you look at the um, third one down, it's 30 times 10 to the 6, so 30 million stem cells per kilogram. Um, now, it's probably total nucleated cells, not just stem cells. But anyway, very high amount. Uh, here's a study, a lot of people know it as the Duke University study, uh, where they looked at autologous cord blood infusions in 25 kids, <clears throat> 1 to 5 times 10 to the 7th cells per kilogram. So, for instance, that's 50 million stem cells per, cells per kilogram, not stem cells. That's total nucleated cells. So if you figure 20% um, of those are stem cells, that's still, um, let's see, it's 50 million cells per kilogram, that's about 10 million stem cells per kilogram. That's, you know, ridiculously high amount. Um, and they showed it to be safe, feasible, and effective in six months, and that was sustained at 12 months for the children's um, interaction, behavior, communication skills. Uh, this is two studies from years ago. Uh, on the left, they actually looked at the combined use of mesenchymal stem cells and cord blood, which would be hematopoietic stem cells, and I love that idea. Um, you know, you have two different types of stem cells that can work in conjunction as well as separately in the body. On the right, um, it was more of a literature review, and they talked about how um, mesenchymal stem cells could offer a unique tool to combat the neural dysregulation and the immune issues for ASD. Um, when we do the stem cell therapy for autism in South Africa, we perform those procedures in Johannesburg at a first-rate facility. The process starts with very easy. It's a free phone consultation. We don't charge for that. It's no obligation. It's confidential with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. We will assign you a PCR, a patient concierge representative, to assist with setting that up with uh, getting you the quotation and helping you with all the travel logistics. We provide free ground transportation from the airport to the hotel and the clinic, so you don't have to worry about that. Now let's talk a little bit about the cells. So our stem cells come from FDA-regulated labs in the United States. These labs have pristine safety records. Um, the quality assurance exceeds FDA standards, and those are pretty rigorous to begin with. Uh, we do culture the umbilical cord stem cells. We are allowed to do that for use outside the United States. Uh, we get about 85 to 90 percent viability, very high. And when we culture the stem cells, we keep them below the fourth generation or the fourth passage, as people call it, um, which according to the International Stem Cell Society uh, is what you're supposed to do to keep them potent and pure and active. So we do treatment, our providers do, with a combination of intravenous and intrathecal application. Uh, we want to get the most amount of cells into the central nervous system, so the intrathecal application is very safe. Our anesthesiologists perform sedation, uh, and they do the procedure. Um, 
they're, they're highly skilled with this. We've done over a thousand of these around the world in the last decade. So it's been very safe. And typically parents tell us they're seeing results within four to six weeks that continues to get better. There are a few options um, when you bring your uh, child to us. Um, you can pay for multiple visits up front over a year. We'll give you, you know, some concession for that. Or you can come in for one, one uh, treatment uh, sessions at a time where it would be, you know, anywhere from actually it could be 60 million up to 200 million stem cells over those few days. It's determined by the child's weight. You know, considering these kids, we'll, we'll go as low as 18 months and, you know, as, as up into the teens. So obviously there's going to be a huge difference in the amount of stem cells. The biggest reason that these treatments may fail worldwide is because the patients don't get enough stem cells and then they get unhappy. So one of the best things with us is we've done so many over the years, our buying power is pretty high, so we can bring these to market at a lot lower at much more cost effectiveness compared to China and Panama and other countries that are going to charge you over 20 some thousand US dollars for these treatments. You know, we're much, much lower than that, two to three times. So to get the process started, please visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. That's our website devoted to South Africa. You can see our two locations. These procedures for autistic children we only do in Johannesburg. Um, the phone number is there, 27213-001-831. And we'll get the process started. Thank you so much for watching.